Hello and welcome everyone. Thanks for joining us today as we continue our series of virtual town halls brought to you by the Division of University Advancement. My name is Brad Bundy and I'm the Vice President here at Miami University. Our town halls are a forum for you, our most dedicated and loyal supporters, to get to know our university leaders and to learn about their vision for the future of the university. We are coming to you from the center of the basketball court at Millett Hall, and I am pleased to welcome Travis Steele. Coach Steele was hired in March of this year as Miami's men's basketball coach after completing a four-year stint as the head coach at Xavier University. While at Xavier, he led the Musketeers to a winning record and two postseason berths. In addition to recruiting two nationally ranked classes among the top 20 as head coach, each of his student athletes graduated during his time at Xavier. Travis, thank you so much for being with us today. Brad, thanks for having me, and I'm excited to answer some of the great questions that we've received. Travis, I cannot recall a moment um, recently um, that has generated as much excitement about this program as your arrival here at Miami University. You could have gone to any number of different programs. Why did you uh, choose to become Miami's head basketball coach? You know, Brad, I think it starts just with the brand. You know, the, the Miami brand resonates across the entire country. Um, from an academic standpoint, you know, this is an original public Ivy school. It's an elite academic school. You walk around here on, around on campus and in Oxford, like when you envision a college campus, that college feel, that's what you get right here at Miami. And then we have this basketball program, which we are the all-time winningest program in the MAC. Won more games, won more championships. So we've won here before. So I felt like I, with the brand where it's already at, I felt like I can really add on to it. Well, you're exactly right. The, the brand is something that really speaks across so many different programs and, and across the whole entire university. So, so well, well, well said, and I'm, and I'm glad that you recognize that as well. Um, for those uh, that don't know you yet, um, you've got a really rich pedigree um, um, and, and working with some of the top programs in the country. Can you share with folks uh, what your journey has been that led you here? Yeah, you know, I've, I've coached at all different levels. I've coached at the high school level at a place called Ben Davis High School in Indianapolis. I've coached at the junior college level uh, at Wabash Valley College in Illinois. I've coached at the AAU grassroots level with the Nike team in Indiana and the Adidas team in Indiana. And then I've coached college basketball. You know, so I've kind of seen a little bit of everything. So I've coached, uh, had an opportunity to work under Kelvin Sampson, under Thab Mata, Chris Mack, Sean Miller. You know, my brother is obviously the head coach at, uh, at Akron now. Don't always claim that, Brad. But, uh, but again, I've been around really good coaches been around terrific coaches and, and you kind of take you know I'm going to be who I am I'm going to be authentic but you also pull things from those guys right that you take from your experiences and say hey man I think this would be really good for the program moving forward for for my vision that's great um yeah you, you you talk about some of the coaching legends of course Miami has some 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 big legends as well right from Daryl Hedrick uh um to Charlie Coles uh to Wally Zerbiak to Wayne Emery um how do you use sort of that that lineage, that, that legacy to inspire your players here? You know, I think we got to get our former players and former coaches back involved with our guys and get our young, our young men right now to understand that we play for those that came before us, right? You know, all the coaches, all the players that have put a lot of work into the program, you know, we play for those guys. And uh, so I've been trying to get the players and, and the coaches back involved, give them an understanding of the history of our program. But also, listen, what do we have to do to honor those guys moving forward? Last summer or the summer before, uh, Wayne Embry came back for the dedication of the statue that's now, um, you know, very much a part of, of the athletic complex here. Um, and I will tell you that um, it, it was the start of us coming out of the COVID season. I couldn't believe the interest across the entire state um, of people coming back um, to honor his legacy and, 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 and the memory of his wife as well. So I think you're exactly right. I think that there are people that would step up and, and, and help you to achieve your goals here, here at Miami as well. Um, you know, there, there was a time in which Miami would routinely uh, end up in the MAC tournament in, in, in Cleveland. Um, and it was always a great time because, as you probably have come to know, we have a really large number of alumni uh, that live in the in the greater Cleveland area. So, so uh, what what can you tell us about uh, uh, you know making sure that we can once again uh, be one of those teams that year after year ends up uh, in that prestigious spot in the MAC tournament? You know, my vision is for us to be able to compete in the NCAA tournament. In order to do that, we got to win the MAC. 
in order to do that, you got to get get up to Cleveland, right? So you got to be in the top eight. Um, now that that's the goal, and and the question is, Brad, how do we get there on a consistent basis? I don't want to just have a great team. I want to have a great program, and there is a difference, right? Programs consistently win, both on and off the court, which we're going to do here at Miami. We're going to graduate our student athletes, right? We're going to do things the right way. Then we're also going to win championships, and so then you say, okay, well, how are we going to get there? I think it starts with number one. With, with recruiting, right? Recruiting's gotta be the bloodline to your program, right? And we gotta do a great job and within this five hour radius right here of Oxford, there's good enough players here to win MAC championships, all right? And then the second thing is the development of our young men. I've hired a great staff, really fortunate. And, you know, Rob Summers, Jonathan Holmes, and Christian Smith are terrific. And I think those guys are doing a great job with our young men of developing them both on and off the court. With those two things, I think that's how we can get to Cleveland consistently and compete for MAC championships and then NCAA tournament. I'll make a commitment on behalf of our alumni and our donors. You get to Cleveland, we'll be there to support you for sure, without <laughs> without question. Um, you know, you've got a reputation of being one heck of a recruiter. Um, can you talk a little bit about what your strategy is um, from a recruitment perspective? You know, how is it that you're able to go out and get the best players in the country? Yeah, I think recruiting comes down to number one fit. You know, I think we have to embrace what Miami is. We've got this great academic institution uh, that we have to be able to use to our advantage. You know, we're different than every other MAC school. We are. I mean, we're different, and we got to embrace that. Um, but also just relationships, right? I've been uh, I've been fortunate enough during my career. I've been in this little three hour radius my entire life, and so like whether it's here in Cincinnati, in local Cincinnati, Dayton, Columbus, Cleveland, uh, Indianapolis, Chicago. Like I said, there's good enough players here for us to win and win win very very big. So we got to get the guys that fit Miami and, and embrace that. But it comes down to the relationship piece in recruiting. Yeah, I always find it interesting when, you know, when when the field is is named in the spring and they, they always show across the country where the teams are coming from. And I always love when I see so many in the dominant Midwest, right, that are, that are there. So I think you're right. I think there's there's certainly the talent, uh, you know, to, to, you know, to field this this team for sure. Um, <clears throat> you know, one of the things that I was really impressed with when I was reading about your resume um, was the importance that obviously graduation means um, to your players, right? Um, uh, we, we talked about about you graduating all of your players at, at Xavier University. And of course, we have a motto here, graduating champions. And so that's very much a, a part of who we are. We have one of the highest graduation rates amongst student athletes in the country. Um, talk about talk about the importance of graduating um, that, that you're going to instill in your players. Yeah, you know, basketball doesn't last forever. You know, all, all of our young men think they're going to play forever, but that ball is going to stop bouncing. And it's how can we uh, set up our, our young men for success after basketball. Hopefully we have guys that play professionally, but then you're going to live hopefully another 40, 50 years of life. How are you going to impact the world? And there's no better degree you can get than a Miami degree. You know, it's always, I tell every recruit that we bring in, this isn't a four-year decision, it's a 40-year decision. Just understand how this degree can impact your life. So obviously we want to graduate our guys, but it's also about that achievement and that's that graduating champions, right? Like, so getting a degree is important, but then also preparing them for life is, is, is even more important. Yeah, that's that's great. I think um, one of the things I've been here for a long time and, and one of the things that I always say is that you will rarely find a Miami graduate that didn't have an incredible experience, right? And that didn't go on to, to, to great success. So I think you're exactly right. Instilling that early on, that this is a lifetime commitment with this institution is really important, whether they're, you know, whether, the, whether they're playing basketball or they're not playing basketball. And once again, you know, those basketball players, if they choose to go on to do other things, you know, there's an entire universe of Miami alumni that are at, out, out there you know, that are willing to help them uh, succeed in life. So that, that's Absolutely. even great. You know, a coach is, is really a leader. It's a, a coach is a, is a manager of, 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 of sorts. And, you know, talk a little bit about your leadership style and, you know, what are the values um, from a leadership perspective that you want to instill in your players? Yeah, um, I'm a servant leader. How, how can I serve others, right? Like I think uh, from our staff, um, that includes our assistant coaches, our ops, our managers, our um, all the way down to our players, our academic advisor. How can I help them? I think that's where it starts with the relationships and you know, showing them that I'm there for them. Um, and I want them to, to do the same, right? Like I want them to do the same. So I always say the best uh, teams are player-led teams. They're not coach-led teams. 
And so we got to, we're working on development or, or with leadership development every single day with our young men and not only with the older guys, but then the younger guys, because then those younger guys will become your older guys soon. So how are we developing leaders within our program? Yeah, yeah, that's great. Um, you know, you have on this on this call um, some of uh, Miami's uh, biggest donors, um, most ardent supporters of the institution. Um, and I guarantee you that I'm going to get calls uh, saying, hey, can you ask coach, what what, what can I do to help? Um, and so if, if, if somebody were to call you today and say, coach, what, what can I do to help? What would your answer be? I say, number one, just support. We got to get Millette rocking, right? Like we got to make this one of the toughest places to play in all of college basketball. I think that's where it starts. And then anything, you know, like, listen, I always say this, listen, we have to invest in our program. This program needs some love is probably the right word to use. Uh, reminds me a little bit of when uh, Kelvin Sampson took over at Indiana. Mm -hmm. uh, just the place just needs a little bit of love. And Millette does itself, our program does, and we have to continue to invest in it. Um, and I'm not afraid to ask. Listen, I, that's what I always always tell everybody, like, listen, we have to grow this program and it, it not one person can't just do it. It takes a village in order to do it. That's great. I, I um uh, I, I love I love hearing that. Um, you know, I got I've got two final questions before we're going to open it up to to the audience um, with some questions that 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 they've uh, given us here while while they've been on. Um, the, the the first is um, rumor has it that uh, that you've gone out and recruited one heck of a class for next year. So yeah. so I wanted you to talk a little bit about that to give people you know some some something to look forward to in terms of next year and and so on. But you know as you're obviously starting with it with you know the going into the MAC conference season. Uh, yeah. this year. Well, you know, we have so much to sell here. First and foremost, say, listen, you can't have a bad visit here. I mean, you walk around on campus and, and you get that feel and all the academics that we were able to sell. Uh, we got a lot to sell. So we, we crushed it in our 2023 class. Um, it's got a lot of local flavor. You know, we have two uh, young men from the Cincinnati area, Evan Epsaro, who goes to Covington Catholic High School over in the northern Kentucky area, but he lives in Cincinnati, um, is a point guard. He's a point guard's point guard. Just really knows how to play. Uh, I've known him for a long time. Honestly, I've kind of followed him just being from the area. Him growing up, um, he's a winner. He's an ultimate winner. Um, got a kid named Ian Elmer who goes to Cincinnati Taft High School um, who uh, is on that upward trend, Brad, that I really look for. I love guys that are getting better late. Because a lot of times those are the guys that continue to get better. There's usually a reason either they were immature physically, they grew, or they work. They're a process-oriented young man, which he is, and he's got that upside. He's six 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 seven. Uh, he, he's a wing. He's a guard, so he's got great size. Really excited about him. Um, we added Reese Potter, who's from Lexington Catholic High School, uh, just hour and a half, you know, two hours away. Seven foot one. Um, anybody runs like a deer. He's skilled. Um, I think he'll be a really nice player for us. Um, Added two young men from the Chicago area, because obviously we have a huge Miami contingent from Chicago as well. Uh, Jackson Kateki, who's six foot nine. Uh, he's a forward from, from he goes to St. Ignatius uh, School up there, phenomenal school, really good player. And then Makai Cooper, who goes to Bolingbrook High School there in Chicago. So we wanted to get more athletic, get bigger, get more skilled. And I think we got all three of those things. And those guys all fit Miami. They're Miami men. Most importantly, they value education, they're high character, and they love basketball. So it's a great combination. It's going to make yeah. me look like I can coach pretty well when you got those guys on the floor, Brad. Well, that's that, that that's great. I, I love I love that strategy and I love that philosophy because you're exactly right. When what you've mentioned um, are areas where Miami recruits not just for for basketball and other intercollegiate. Uh, athletic sports, but it's also where we recruit students. And a lot of times, you know, the kids that you're talking about, they'll bring other kids to Miami University. They won't they won't be playing basketball, but I guarantee you they'll be in here supporting, you know, their classmates that they went to school with. And so I love that idea that, you know, that locally uh, you, you'll begin to develop a fan base based on, um, you know, where a lot of these kids came from. So that's that's great. That's great yeah. to hear. Um, so my last question, and I always end uh, every interview with this, you I, I know uh, you have no doubt heard, you know, our motto of love and honor. Um, what what has love and honor come to mean to you? you no, know, number one, I think, you know, having a passion um, for Miami in general, like uh, this is a great place, but the people make the place, right? Like you can have buildings, buildings can be very hollow, 
right? And you got the the nicest buildings, the shiniest things in the world. If you don't have the right people there, it doesn't really matter. And the people here are incredible. Mm. I mean, how how we've been welcomed at, at welcomed as a family from the first day that I was announced as head coach here, from the community, it's just it's just been incredible. And then we always want to honor those. And I always say, listen, we we had former players come to multiple games this year already, and we always honor those guys that came before us, right? With our play of how hard we work, you know, the the sacrifice that we that we make the togetherness that we want to play with. We always want to honor those guys that came before us. So love and honor means a lot to us, and our guys know exactly what that means. You know, we always obviously say that. at the We have it everywhere in our locker room, our offices. You see it everywhere, and uh, hopefully we can live that out. Yeah, it's 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 funny that you say it. Um, uh, you know, a lot of times people that have never been here, they hear this love and honor thing, right, and they don't yeah. get it. But, man, once you step on this campus – and, and once you have that Miami experience, you know exactly what it means, right? 100%. Excellent. So uh, let's open it up for a couple of questions that have come in since since uh, we started this. Um, first of all, uh, since you've arrived on campus, what's been your biggest surprise? I, I would say, you know, coming from Xavier, Xavier was a smaller campus. Um, you know, I, I it's been a while since I had been at a, uh, at, at a bigger campus. I mean, it is just the buzz that was here in the spring when I first got here, I was like, wow. You know, like I said, this feels like college. You know, this is what you dream of when you think of that college experience. Uh, it's Miami, yeah. right? So that has been a huge adjustment for me and it's been different, but it gives us a heck of a lot to sell. But like I said, you can't have a bad visit. I mean, how can you not have a great time here? I mean, this is like paradise. Yeah, yeah, you're exactly right. It's hard to predict um, uh, realistically, but, but if you were to look forward, um, you know, to three years into your term or tenure here, um, where do you where do you see Miami uh, men's basketball? I'm, I'm glad you mentioned the the year three. You know, every decision I make, Brad, is about year three. I have it in my office, I have it in my drawers, I have it in my at my house above my bed. Every decision, if it doesn't positively impact year three, I'm not doing it. I don't care if it's I'm not short term. I'm thinking long term, and that's develop our culture the right way our style of play the right way, how we recruit, everything we do is about year three. My goal is to be able to compete for a championship in year three. And I think we can do that. Um, we got the staff to do that. We're recruiting really well. We got to continue to develop young men, you know, and teach them how to win. I'm trying to change this culture uh, within our program of competing every day, um, but we're getting there and it can be done. Well, wow, that's exciting. Um, so we're sitting here obviously in the middle of, of, of Millette Hall. Um, a, uh, a, a a very aging venue, right? Um, built in 1968, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. Um, what's your vision for a better basketball venue uh, for Miami? You know, I think the bones are here, Brad. I really do. Like, listen, this is a historic uh, arena. I mean, Millette Hall, there's been a lot of great games. A lot of, think about all the jump balls have been right here, right where we're sitting at, Brad. I mean, some terrific players, terrific coaches, big time games. The bones are here. It just needs some loving, right? It just does, you know? I think, you know, when this building was built, it's a multi-purpose uh, facility. Um, I think we probably have to move the court down, right? And I think we, have, we need a practice facility. You know, kids are into the aesthetics, right? It helps recruiting immensely. But I also want to give our guys a great experience while they're here, right? The development piece, so it's twofold. It helps recruiting new facilities, but it also helps the development of our student athletes. Having a gym space to be able to come into, knowing I can get shots at midnight, 6 a.m., noon, anytime they want, man, that makes all the difference in the world as far as developing our young men. You know, you're in the middle, obviously, of, of, of your non-conference uh, schedule right before we start the new year and, and, and go into, go into you know, the MAC calendar. Um, what's your philosophy when you put together a non-conference, uh, you know, first 10, 11 games of the season? It's to prepare you for the MAC play, right? Um, we, long-term, Brad, we have to change the thought process that the MAC's a one-bid league. And I think that's gonna take time. But right now we're a one-bid league, if you look at just historically. And, you know, it's for, to prepare us. You know, can we just see different styles of play? Can we get road games, some neutral site games, some home games, obviously? Um, I'm going to continue, you know, like Charlie Coles, you know, he'd play anybody anywhere, which you respect. I respect that. And we got to get that back. 
And we got to get some good brands in here in the Millette. And that's my that's my goal, you know, so we can you know continue to excite our fan base. That's great. You you, you talked about your your leadership style and and leadership philosophy. Um, convert that a little bit to what your coaching philosophy is, um, uh, especially especially you know during the games. Yeah, um, I, I think I tend to think Brad that I'm a player's coach, and I think sometimes we'll hear people will hear that and say, oh well, he's soft with the players. I'm just very firm. I'm very fair. I'm very direct. If I see something, I'm going to I'm going to deal with it, whether it's negative or positive. You know, we I want to get our togetherness better than it's ever been, and that starts with our staff, right? If they if players can see right through staffs that are um, maybe one guy's going this direction, one guy's going this direction, um, we're a really together staff. Our players are going to be really really together, and but I'm going to be a positive guy, but I'm going to hold guys accountable. Listen, at the end of the day, that's my job. Great players want to be coached. Yeah. They want to be coached. Yeah. Well, and, and you know, uh, you hear this time and time again that some of the greatest mentors, you know, that men and women have, you know, were their coaches, right? Whether it was whether it was early on, you know, K through 12 or whether it's, whether it's in, in college. So the impact that a coach can have on a, on a young person's life is, is immense and, and transformative. Can right? last forever. Exactly, exactly. Um, we, we were talking a little bit about the, about the Bahamas Bowl a couple of minutes ago, and um, you, you, you mentioned and, and a lot of people saw that, you know, Ben, uh, ben Roethlisberger was down there with us, and um, I had an opportunity to, to talk to him, and I said, you know, I don't think you realize the impact um, that that your time here had on things outside of football in terms of us being able to recruit, um, you know, new students. They saw they saw this winning program and they wanted to be a part of it and they wanted to be here at Miami and that had an impact for many years. Um, and and certainly, you know, the same thing can be said for men's basketball, right? So, what kind of impact do you think um, a a successful basketball program can have on other aspects outside of basketball across campus? I think it could be huge. And, you know, you look at all the uh, the data that's out there from like when Butler, for example, when they were in the Horizon League, right, they made back-to-back -back Final Fours. It changed the enrollment. It changed the whole university. And, again, I always tell our guys this, listen, we are the least important people here on campus. We really are. But we have a big job to, you know, we, we do re we represent Miami whether that's on TV. Sometimes when kids hear about a school, the first thing they see is, hey, were they in the NCAA tournament? Because you're filling out those brackets, you know, and you're picking Miami to, in advance. You watch, you, you see them on TV, and that can help just our university, I think, just continue to grow and, uh, and, and strengthen our brand. Yeah, I, you're exactly right. And we've seen it time and time again, right, with, with schools across the country, Gonzaga and Butler and yep. Xavier and Dayton and, and others, right? Yep. Miami deserves to be a part of that as well, right? 100%. Absolutely. Um, so last question. I uh, haven't, haven't ever had one of these questions before, but uh, coaches are known to have uh, some superstitions or uh, pregame rituals. Do you have any? Oh, man, uh, I, I do. Uh, you know, I, I, I always chew gum at the same time. <laughs> Um, I always, uh, I, I, I'm a big chapstick guy. I always use my chapstick, but then from there, I, I try to, I, try, I don't want to have too many superstitions because then, man, I, I think you live in a very uncomfortable life. Um, but, uh, but yeah, I have a few. Those would be my two, the chapstick and my gum. There you go. There you <laughs> go. Hey, Travis, thank you so much uh, for being part of this today. We really appreciate it. And thanks to all of you for joining us as well online. We truly appreciate your loyal and dedicated support for Miami for intercollegiate athletics and the men's basketball program. Until our next town hall, I hope you all are well and have a wonderful holiday season. Love and honor.